All right. Uh, thank you for uh, choosing SUP Podcast. Uh, I am your uh, host, Lawrence Deloach, and uh, this is episode 127. And uh, next to me, I got Chris Cheney. Cheney? What's up, guys? Cheney? What's up, guys? And then right uh, next to me, I have Luke Chovisti. Thank you for choosing us today. <laughs> yes, thank you for choosing. You chose thank us. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose us. You could have picked us. any other podcast, but you chose ours to listen to this week. So thank you. Thank you for choosing Sub Podcast. My name is Lawrence. How can I help you? Um, <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what fucking working in customer service will do yep. to you. In addition to taking years off your life, it'll make you <laughs> talk like you're, like you're trying to help people with their cable bill. But... Uh, <laughs> We got a lot. Of, we got a lot of things to talk about today, man. This this episode, this is going to be a really good one. Uh, first, like, obviously, we're going to start out as we're recording today, uh, Sunday, August twenty third. Uh, today is the Black Mamba uh, top ten player of all time, five championships, arguably the greatest Laker. Uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. This is uh, it would have been his forty second birthday uh, this year. Yeah, and, Kobe. Um, yeah. yeah, man, and it's uh, it's so it's so interesting to me that it's we, we have playoff basketball in August on his birthday. The, uh, August is usually you know it's the off season. Everyone's getting ready for for the upcoming season, but we're in the midst of playoff basketball, and it's you know it's it's so surreal that this is 2020 and and this is what we're talking about we're talking about August playoff basketball we're talking about rest in peace Kobe Bryant right and uh this whole week obviously uh Nike is uh there i guess it's like you want to call it the Mamba week uh where they're you know releasing a lot of their sneakers uh where they're releasing some retro pro tros you know under Kobe's name uh Kobe Pro Tro 5s uh, today we had the the big stage uh, that that dropped. Yeah, the uh, white one, the white white pair. Yeah, man, one hundred eighty dollars sold out immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now when you look on, you know, secondary markets, you know, we're we're talking seven hundred dollars uh, for resale. Which, I mean, it's we knew this was going to happen. Yep. But, I mean, we're it's. Um, what do you guys think? Let's just let's just really get right to it. What do you guys think, man, about people trying to sell sneakers uh, from a guy that is is dead, basically? So people are taking advantage of the Kobe name. Where, I mean, I remember when Kobe was alive, you could walk in and get a pair of Kobe's, and people were hooping at him. I fucking played ball yeah. in many a Kobe yeah. retros or Kobe sneakers. So, what do you guys? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, this is way more honest than it was when he passed in real time. Like, so when people started trying to put like $13,000 price tags on some shit at like right after he died, like that was some grime shit. Mm -hmm. This it's, it's, it's a little more interesting because it's a little more honest, you know, like time has passed. Um, it is his birthday. So like the, the hype around like the, like people have had time to process, I guess. And, uh-huh. you know, I've, I've said that Nike's kind of milking this in the past uh, quote, but like, this is a little more honest because it is honoring him. So it seems less grimy because there's like the whole, or- not only people, but organizations are backing it. If that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, like I understand it does kind of suck that they're in like the five to $700 range uh, as far as like a, a resale situation but like we knew it was gonna we knew it was coming we knew they were gonna be kind of high up there in price and i you know it's kind of business as usual for resellers i think uh i don't know it's gonna be weird for a little bit with kobe shoes just because of everything that's going on but i I think eventually we'll get to that point again where kobe's will be on the shelves and you could be able to buy them and play basketball in them as they were intended well, that you, you say it, you say it's interesting, and I look at today's release, and I'm like, these out of the three releases that were coming out this week, I think these were the the weakest ones, to be honest with. You, in terms of color schemes and the way yeah. they're set up, and and then the next two that are releasing with the green, uh, and then the the Laker colorway. I mean, I think that's going to be even worse. Yep, and like you said, I mean the way that Nike is talking, they're retroing or they're going to pro show some some pretty insane 
colorways in terms of the Grinches and mm-hmm. reverse Bruce Lee's and things that people definitely uh, were were looking for at, when Kobe was alive. So I think you know we if we're talking and, and and I think you know like you said some of this a lot of this definitely falls on Nike where they know that these are sought after sneakers like we know that like we legit know that people are fucking going crazy for these Kobe's because you it brings out everyone the it brings out yeah. the hardcore fans the Laker fans the Kobe fans the people who just want a piece of uh, to immortalize or you know just to have something with Kobe's name and then you got the resellers who who really don't give a fuck they just want to make that buck and I think we, we have this you know we always have a, a colliding of both worlds but I think this is just it's going to be for and, and you said like a year but I could see this being for a few years unless Nike figures out hey let's let's flood the market but it, yeah. it seems like they won't do that they're not going to do that no well, they, yeah well I mean is there another instance of I can't recall another player with an abrupt death like this that had such a sneaker legacy right there either he's the, like kind of the first one in this space where it's like unfortunate passing but very popular sneaker with a very popular brand mm-hmm. yeah we've, we've never had i mean out of all the you know the big names that got sneaker deals jordan braun you know uh, katie everyone you know everyone's still alive everyone is yeah. still you know there there really hasn't been a situation where we've had a sneaker you know a, a, a signature line where the athlete is no longer here with us. So I think this, and this goes to show you that, you know, unfortunately, especially with sneakers and, and memorabilia, that, yo, dude, you, you're worth more dead than you are alive, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And it, it sucks, but I think this is what we're going to deal with. Because, I, I, you know, today, like I said, I, I was kind of, like, not disgusted, but I knew what was going to happen. You know, obviously, it's his birthday. You know, this is the first release. And, and I mean, dudes are going to cash out. Like, people are – like, I think uh, we were outside today in Midtown Manhattan, and we saw a bunch of dudes just, like, prowling the foot actions, the foot lockers in the area because yeah. dudes are trying to, you know, they're trying to get those, you know, scoop up those pairs because it's like, hey, we want to make a dollar. I don't mind the dudes that like want the Kobe shit just to feel like they're a part of something. Cause that is reminiscent of like the reason why we even like sneakers to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, feel yeah. like you're a part of something. So I, I, it's, it's disappointing to look at and think about like people making money off his death. But then again, it's like, if people want, I can't get too mad like in this situation. Cause if mm-hmm. people want to be a part of it and, but the only way they can do that is buy the expensive sneaker. It's like, it's supply and demand. So right now, I think the resellers are kind of like, it's, not, it's just definitely not as bad as it was before. It's worse. I think it's worse. You think it's worse right now? With, with, Kobe, with Kobe shit or just what? Shit in general? No, selling Kobe shit. Because, I mean, before, dude, they were adding yeah, like three before zeros. was nuts. Yeah, I mean, well, I, was, wow, disrespectful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, well, I think, I think people capitalized the moment off of his death, like you said. I mean, shoes were going for shoes that you can get for, you know, for retail or under retail. Like you said, they were going for, you know, four or five times that. Oh, his Adidas stuff went up like tenfold because no one gave a shit about that. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden that $100 shoes were fucking like 1500 And it, with this, though, this is what I'm saying. Just to circle back is like, if you, if you want to be a part of this Kobe thing, like maybe you missed the train, you're like sad or whatever. And like now it's his birthday, new shoes coming out. It's like, all right, let me get the shoes. Supply and demand, like based on how this hype thing works, it, would, it makes sense that the shoes are this price. I don't feel like it's as disrespectful or like as on purpose as it was before. I mean, this, this all makes sense and adds up. It's just unfortunate that it's the way it is. So let me ask you guys a question. There's still a couple more releases this week uh, uh, of Kobe uh, Pro Tros. If you guys, are you guys going to try for any, or are you guys, if you do get a pair, what are you, what's your intentions? What are you going to do with the shoes? I'm going to try to be a respectful guy and let this one go. Cause I was, now I'm not going to say I was never a Kobe fan, but I was certainly not a Laker fan. You know, my Celtic shit. Um, so, I mean, these shoes aren't for me. I'm not playing ball right now and I'm not, um, like a huge Laker fan. So that, you guys have them. It's all you. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much just, I'm kind of the same at this point. I, uh, I tried for the, the, the ones that came out today because I like the color scheme on them. Uh, I kind of like the purples, but it's just, you know, it's not really for me. I might hit up some of my friends who are Lakers fans and try to put in, like, an extra bid for them on sneakers. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you know? I think that's, I mean, you know, it, unfortunately, and this is the sad thing, and I'm going to say this is, this is where we're at in terms of where sneakers in, in general are. People are, are, you know, some people are like, well, fuck it. I'm going to try to get these so I can sell or trade to get something that I may want. And I think that's, that's where this industry is right now where, you know, it's like, oh man, I, I can make, you know, I can, if I miss out on a dunk or I miss out on, on some Jordans or I, you know, I want to get, let me get these Kobe's, flip those, get that. And I think that's where the sneaker game is really, uh, it's really fucked up, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and I really don't see a way around it because we never, I say we as like the sneaker community, we never first thought, you like, everyone's alive. There's never been a situation like this. I mean, even older dudes, like, you will even look at some of the older models, like the Weapon with Bird and um, Magic, like, they're still around, too. So even, like, the yeah. older models, we have no precedent to understand. Like, we have even nothing to follow. Even the great Stefan Marbury is still around. Well, I, w- I was going to say, I think with Kobe, it's obviously it's a combination of him dying so tragically, so young, yeah. you know, unexpectedly. Like, you know, Bird or Magic, you know, unfortunately, you know, we – we uh, we don't have the signature line of, you know, I mean, like you said, the weapons, but at the end of the day, you know, Bird is close to 60, Magic is six, like these guys are 60 year old guys. Um, Kobe passed away at 40, you know, 41. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's a little different. No, um, for sure. I was just saying we have no reference point for this. Like there's no, there's no code of yeah. conduct. You know what I mean? Like. I would hear a lot of my friends, I would hear them uh, say, I'm going to buy some Kanye's like some, whether it's Adidas or whatever, because they're like, if he dies, then, you know, and I've heard that before. Oh, that's, that's wow. disgusting. That but is I, nasty. I mean, no, I, I think it's terrible, but I, I've heard, you know, my friends, you know, say that. And it's like, uh, so you're, you're buying shoes. Like people are like, you know how much these would go to if he passed away? Like if they're this now, then imagine if he tried, like it's, Especially when Kobe <laughs> passed away, people started looking at like Kanye, like, all right, well, what if Ye, you know, passes away early? I, um, uh, you know, I never thought about. It. See, this is a this is a really bad point, but it yeah. it that's a true thing. <laughs> it's a true thing. Skyrocket. Mm-hmm. All these fucking three fifties that have been going for like retail the whole time. Now they're probably gonna be bumped to five. Oh my god, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, but like I said, it's an interesting week. It's uh, it's NBA playoffs, Kobe, Kobe Mamba week. A lot of players are wearing fives. Um, I do want to stick on the NBA because, I mean, goddamn, we're playing playoff basketball and playoff basketball, the, end, baby. the end of August, September, you know what so I mean? Weird. But um, today it was uh, – speaking of, you know, a guy that, like, Kobe uh, liked – and his uh his daughter Gigi, rest in peace as well. She was a big fan of was Luka Doncic, the uh, Slovenian assassin. This kid is a monster. I, I fucking I think for him to be so young at twenty one ish, and for him to dominate today, uh, forty three points, seventeen rebounds, thirteen assists, and a victory in a last second buzzer beat a three against the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. With a sprained uh, ankle, right? He sprained his ankle on Friday night against the Clippers. Came back. No Chris Stapps, Porzingis. That's the second best player on the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Bro just was – I mean, he is, he is something else. And, I, and Kobe, you know, you know, if we're going to, you know, talk a little bit about basketball, Kobe, like I said, there's, you know, there's footage of Kobe trash-talking Luka and, and Slovenian. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? He was – and Luka's like, who the fuck is talking to me and my – and his language name. <laughs> Turns around, it's like, oh, it's Kobe. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, what do you – I mean, what do you – what do you guys think about this kid, Doncic, man? I like Doncic's game. I just – I don't think they, they're going to make it. I think they're – I think they're done with this series. I think you can't risk – you can't risk your future uh, of the Mavericks, at least, on this – because, like, you know, sure. Maybe he keeps playing and maybe they win, but you know, if if his if his ankle gives out, uh, you lose your franchise player. And that's well, I mean, stupid. I mean, if his ankle, I mean, his ankle is fucking. I mean, if he's putting up forty three, seventeen, and thirteen on a bum ankle, I mean, shit. Like, yeah, you, know, you, I mean, you say to keep him in. I mean, yeah. He's, I mean, right now the series is tied. They have a shot at you know this is a best of three series now. Like. They yeah. have a shot at winning the whole like the the series and going to the next round. I mean, it's going to be a tough task, but you got to keep playing this kid, man. He's he's the next big thing. 
I don't really know which way you would go on that because bo- you both make valid points. Um, I mean, he's. I don't think he's going to – if his ankle is like stays kind of fucked up, he's not going to last if they keep moving. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah if so, they move to the next round, who knows? Uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of like weird shit they do in the NBA, though, like for, to help heal. I don't know what kind of like regiment these guys are on, especially within the oh, bubble. Yeah, maybe they got Vicks. Or not. But – uh, I mean, if if he could still play, I guess play him. If you, I mean, you asked the guy, dude. I mean, he, I mean, well, I mean, obviously, we we didn't think he was going to suit up based on Friday night. I did not think he was going to play today, or I did not think he was going to be effective today. But as if as a, excuse me, as Sick effective dab. as effective <laughs> as Luca was today. I mean, obviously, the ankle is not giving him too much of an issue. He has to. He's going to continue to play the rest of the series. Yeah. He's going to lay it all out on the line. I think the Clippers still probably win in maybe six or seven games. But, um, you know, like I said, this is an amazing first. This is his first playoffs. And the based on the course that, you know, the way he's playing, and everyone's looking at his game at this young. I mean, he's – I mean, he wins a couple championships. I, you know, I could totally see him being, you know, going down as one of the greatest players that ever right. played the game. He's amazing. Yeah, no, he'll definitely – he's – yeah, the kid is really yeah. fucking good. Um, really, really good. I, it's uh, so weird. This play, the not. I mean, not only it's playoff basketball in August, but like since the atmosphere is so different, like some people are playing worse and, and some people are playing much better within this bubble. Right. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember which game I was, but we. I was watching one of the Rocket games. Like, uh, I must have been a week ago, and they had like seventy points. Each team had seventy points at halftime. I was like, "What is this? Are we no defense yeah. anymore? No, I know. Like the Rockets are like a offensive team but they have 74 points at the first half yes. it's kind of ridiculous yeah. to me and then you see some of these other guys like i don't think because they don't have the energy of like home or whatever they're just like playing kind of sloppy and shit and like mellow is finally playing good it's just very <laughs> interesting to watch mellow looks good <laughs> mm-hmm. Mello looks like young mellow young young who young mellow oh okay mellow looks amazing um He's, I mean, Melo's a great redemption story. I mean, he was left for dead in the NBA last, you know, last season. Teams didn't want him. He lasted seven games with the the Houston Rockets. You know, everyone thought he would never play another game. And then Portland brought him in and, and fucking he looks. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for Carmelo because, you know, obviously he's top 15 scorer of all time. Um, just, you know, he's been in the NBA 17 years, you know, came in with LeBron and Dwayne Wade, you know, he won a, a college championship at Syracuse. So I think this is, you know, obviously, I, I, hopefully he gets another year or two in and rise on to the sunset, but uh, mm, I'm totally happy for Melo. Yeah. Um, and uh, Luke, I wanted to say this in person on record. Ha ha, you got eighth pick, you fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! How did the Knicks? You know, they had twenty percent chance. Twenty percent chance they still get pick eight. <laughs> I know. Yo, Celtics got pick fourteen. I I know, I know. I know because we had a trade thing, but it's still funny. It's just like yo, even <laughs> listen. Mm-hmm. The Knicks are done. <laughs> the Knicks are done as an organization until we can get rid of James Dolan. I I don't know if I can even watch the Knicks anymore. They just make me sad. And I play, I play with them in my my player mode. And even a fucking ninety nine superstar player cannot fix the Knicks. Knicks uh... <laughs> Julius Randle will. If I pass Julius Randle the ball, he's gonna fucking spin move and and <laughs> chuck it halfway across court. Don't make any sense. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, you just you're just happy because the the Celtics swept the the Sixers today. Yes, yeah, son. Come on. <laughs> Which you know, I want to talk about that real quick. Yeah, talk about it. Simmons and Embiid look fucking miserable on the Sixers right now. Embiid is specifically looks miserable. So I think like we've got a we've got a blow up situation coming in. It so is, who um, do you get rid of? Do you get rid of Embiid or do you get rid of Simmons? Do you get rid of both of them? Um, uh, I guess you would keep Embiid. It's not as easy. I mean, I think uh, I think Simmons is the the more tradable asset, but both of them. I think whatever team gives you a better deal for for the player, uh, I think Golden State might be in the mix to get one of them. We don't – I mean, we don't know. This offseason could be crazy. But, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, you have to blow up that Philadelphia 76ers, man. Do you think we get uh, Clay Thompson to the, to the Sixers? Uh, I don't think you break up Clay and Steph Curry. So, I, I think – you know, I, I think, like I said, we, we don't know what's going to happen. 
But I, I definitely feel like, yes, you are right. We do have to, uh, this 76ers experiment is not uh, working. So, you know, it is what it is. But um, mm-hmm. what's their slogan again? Like, trust the, trust, trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Yeah, no, the process has failed you. <laughs> um, all your guys are in Florida now. <laughs> you did nothing you can do. <laughs> well, they're, they're going fishing. Season's over. Uh, and and uh, speaking of season's over, season's beginning, uh, Supreme's new season has uh, begun. Oh, what a transition. Wow, look at my guy work. Come I, on, guys, we're professionals. Let's I, know we're not supposed to, like, I know we're not supposed to like bring attention to the transitions, but fuck, that was a good one. That's, that's how he does, man. So I mean, we got we got some shit. I guess this being uh, for the audio listeners, the the cross uh, hoodie being like I think the pillar of interest for most people. Oh, the the cross box logo. The yeah, the Krizox logo. Krizox logo. Um, but uh, you know, I I gotta. I'll be one of the first to admit. Uh. This is one of the better looking seasons I've seen from them in a while. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, you guys know how I feel about Supreme personally. I'm kind of not on that. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, generally speaking, a lot of this stuff looks nice. Yeah, I agree. I, I think a lot of the a lot of the stuff uh, looks pretty nice this year. Um, that leopard bubble jacket. I mean, if I had that leopard bubble jacket, do you know how many ABGs I would get? <laughs> all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of them. All of I them. mean, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, how do you feel about the Smurf stuff? How do we feel about it? So, um, I actually don't mind the Smurf stuff. Like, the, I thought yeah. it was going to be terrible, but it's actually just fine. I mean, those pants, no, I'm not doing anything with those pants. The, that no. shit is nuts looking. But, um, hold on, let me see. Cover me and see if I can just pull that up specifically. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence, is there any, any standouts for you from this season? I think I think uh, more of the accessories and other shit, but uh, I don't know. I I, I think uh, I, I would. I always say like, oh man, I'm I, this season's bogo. I like, and then I get the bogo and I fucking sell it, and I'm like, yeah. I'm not keeping this shit. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not even a thumbnails are too small for me to I really identify where those pants went. But like that big hit of the Smurf on the back, like I'm cool with that. I'm cool with yeah. like the, all the, like the real ninety references. I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to take some 90 shit and, like, clean it up, like, the Kith Looney Tunes shit, like, if you want to do that, I'm that cool was nice. with that. Yeah, a lot of this shit, though, for that shit, I'm, like, all right with. Uh, I got the uh, I got the lover's tee. Shout out to my boy Chris Ramirez with the hookup. Appreciate you, dog. I was able to get one of those uh, because, you know, I'm a lover, so I need, I need a shirt that says that. What do we what do we think about accessories? I mean, like Lawrence, the if microphone. You, if dude. you don't use the microphone in every show after COVID, I don't know if I can respect you. Yeah, microphone is a nice little piece. There's a uh, there's the Mortal Kombat game. Why? Oh yeah, you know what? I want to backtrack a little bit because last week I was talking about how I didn't know about the Chucky. Yeah. I never once thought about actually having the doll. I thought they were going to do some like lame T hook or yeah. some shit. Like overall, like actually make the outfit. No, a Chucky doll, that's cool. All right, I fuck with that. That makes yeah. complete sense. Okay. We got a Chucky 180 from you. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it was like an all over print. I thought it was just like a box logo on the. No, on yeah. Like I, I, uh, I didn't let my creativity like bring me to this place. Yeah, and I think that uh, yeah, I got to. And the knife is a supreme knife. I love it. Yeah, man, bro, that's yeah. I think they. It looks like they're having fun again. You know, Uh, here and there. I mean, some of the stuff is like I think they go into someone's garage and then they like, uh, (laughs) and then they sprinkle like they like pop like a confetti thing and whatever the confetti lands on, they put a logo on. Not a Um, terrible idea. (laughs) I mean, because who's this lipstick really for? Seriously. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, you you would be surprised, bro. So it's I mean, gonna... no, I know like hype girl, like hype bays or whatever you want to call them, like would get all over this, but I mean, like, uh, yeah. Uh. Uh, that microphone, dude, I could just imagine, bro, Lawrence, this is, really is like your <laughs> final evolution. <laughs> this is your final. Bro, part. I could see you going on stage <laughs> at a show unplugging the microphone, dropping it on the floor, and then pulling out your own microphone and plugging it in, and it's just a fucking supreme one. 
Yeah, I actually, I actually fucks with that. I think that's gonna be uh, something I probably, I might go for. You Yo, know? Oh my God. So bad. we're all going for it for you. We have to. But nah, Ooh. this is yeah. That's actually that's fire. I'm not even gonna lie, to you. especially with the state of comedy where it's at right now, where everyone you know is using their own microphones. Everyone, exactly. as you know, I Yo. think e- even when I think even when you know when we get back to comedy being indoors, I think that is actually something that's really funny that you can use uh for stage and yeah oh, click 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 the uh the description again oh, it's here. it's essentially wait it's basically the microphones that i th- it's basically this microphone yeah it's just the, it's the mic we use are shores right mm-hmm. um if i was gonna guess the retail price on them it'd probably be 45 i think that's what they generally go for maybe 40. oh so if, if, if it's 40 or 45 expect a, a retail of like 58 60 bucks yeah maybe Which 70 is, that's not even that bad i'll pay for that mm-hmm. yeah there's there's like crazier microphones that like caught like i mean when we when we were buying this equipment and shit i was in fucking uh b and h looking at some microphones like why is this 700 dollars? does that even make any yeah. sense so like a sonizer whatever yeah, shit like filters the air that you're breathing and shit like yeah bro but that's shit. not for us that's for singers yeah that's true that's very true but this no this if we don't this, have a sold out tuesday when the shit opens again and having this on the mic having this on the mad. i know sold out tuesday's uh comedy show starting in 2022 indoors like you know <laughs> <laughs> crazy the pre microphones oh man yeah i'm with that i'm with the shits on that um do we have any other um Thoughts on some of these accessories? Like, this makes sense to me, too. Kind of like I was saying, I thought they were going to do something like the face masks and shit, but no. Uh, me, a dummy, again, didn't realize cabinet. they could have a cabinet. Mm-hmm. So stupid. Yeah. This, yeah, this is nice, too. I want it. I don't, I don't need it, but I want it. But you want it. No, I understand, bro. Like, there's a lot. I mean, you know, I think a lot of times... What do you think of this Zippo, Lawrence? The uh, Swaros, the crystal joint. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. I like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a smoker, or I don't even really. I don't like lights because I'm scared yeah. of fire. But at the same time, like I, I'm with the, you know, I'm I sure. Just, I, honestly, I just set you up to say Swarovski. I know. I know. That's why I said. <laughs> that's why I said the crystal, the crystal one. You know what I mean? What is this? Who knows, dude? So it's, it's a, a sofa bed seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, yo, I'm with this. I like this. It's a modular bed seat thing. I don't, uh, Dude. This imagine, shit's for the birds. I, I, no, it's not. For, well, yeah, it's for the birds. But also, it's for me when I have the birds over. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nasty fuck. <laughs> I am. I'm so gross. <laughs> I mean, th- this one's going to bang, too. Everyone wants this shit, for sure. This, that sold out already. From That sold out already, bro. It oh, it off. did? Yeah. Oh, it dropped. Oh. I, I wasn't I wasn't trying to chase some of this shit, so I didn't realize this came out already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one came out kind of sad that my boy could not get a hold of that. I'm surprised there's no like quick strike mask though. I really thought they were gonna try to f- get a mask out. Are those fanny packs down there that kind of look like masks? Yeah, I mean okay. there are. Uh, I mean there's hype masks in the market already. I really right. thought they were gonna try to pull some shit quick and. You know, like take old references and like make a mask. So, I don't know. I thought something was going to happen, especially you with that something. Mortal Kombat shit. But I was off. It's okay. No, I like that, man. Um, what's what's uh, changing? I think this this season is going to be interesting. I think we get our first collab. I believe I believe this week or next week. Um, I, I talked about this earlier, and um, and I mentioned. Kanye and you know him passing away you know people were saying you know I have friends when Kobe passed away you know people said Kanye um and Kanye's an Adidas guy and uh but you know in the wonderful world of Kanye's tweeting uh he tweeted something that you know it's it's you know hey he tweeted about the uh the ISPA the Roll Warriors yeah and uh and he was like uh so cool Nike keep innovating the world needs a great job Right. There's another tweet where he talks about um, how it reminds him of his anime uh, mm-hmm. youth. Yes. Um, and I think this is just all the more reason, uh, Lawrence, you have to watch Akira now. Yeah. Can you just watch Akira with us for Christ's sake? Why? Why? Because it's, it's, it's 
like it's the reason streetwear exists almost it's like pretty close it's really? one of one of the, like the the six reasons why <laughs> why streetwear re- exists as far as anime is concerned a lot of the polls uh, at least originally like you could kind of like have a flow chart and it all go back to akira yeah the whole reason like us as americans are obsessed with uh anime it's akira and also, when I read this tweet the first time, I read this in a very sarcastic tone. Oh, so I did too. Ellipses. Wow. So cool, Nike. <laughs> Keep innovating. The world needs it. Great, Great job. job. Assholes. <laughs> There's an undertone of talking shit the whole time. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I thought he was being... But he also, ha- he also has the easy mop joints yeah. on his feet. Yeah. Which, I want to talk about that actually after, but what do you guys think of just him tweeting about nike saying good job and also what do you think is going on in the adidas office they're like this guy fucking again jesus no i think they're fine with it i think adidas has given up on trying to control anything kanye does yeah i don't think yeah i mean i i don't think he's uh i think that was the best decision adidas ever did was give easy his just own let me go go do your thing dude we don't fuck yeah just give shit. him his own yeah. line where it's like Listen, man, it's your name on it fucking leave us out of it like we'll 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 ship the shit out for you but you know. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, you know, he's allowed to like whatever he's allowed to like. Like, I think, you know, they did a, they did a, a photo shoot. This is maybe like a year ago at his crib with all the, the different, you know, 350s. And then, you know, in there sprinkled in, we did see some Nikes in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He had the Prestos and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. So, so I think, you know, I, I think obviously he knows, but I think that that comes with, you know, a lot of people. Allen Iverson is a perfect example of a guy who has a, 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 con- a lifetime contract with Reebok, but I've seen him wear other shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, dudes, uh, and just because I understand, you know, that's the, you have a, an endorsement deal and you have a signature line, but, you know, I, I, I mean, a lot of Nike guys really don't go to other, you know, they don't really go to other, um, brands but a lot of like adidas guys like i saw there's over there's a picture on the internet of clay thompson and i remember when uh, golden state was playing houston in the playoffs and travis scott was wearing some sneak his sneakers and i remember clay like they, they, the photographer caught clay like staring at the sneakers <laughs> travis scott was wearing so, so I, it, nike is you know they got the the best sneakers man i'm not you know I'm not brand loyal but i am brand loyal to a certain extent I'm I've brand seen... loyal as a stockholder of Nike. No, mm-hmm. Ewing. Ewing. No, I'm a stockholder of Nike. But you're the Ewing boy. But I'm the Ewing boy. <laughs> I see, I'm an undercover agent for Ewing. Yeah, okay. Nice. A, at the stock meetings, I'm like, what if we brought Ewing in? And they're like, Luke, sit down. <laughs> um, I've seen these on feet, and they look insane. Like, and not in a good way. They look literally nuts. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. I saw a guy riding his bike with this shit on. I was like, Yo, what the fuck? Dude, you should have chased him down and been like, like, I have some questions for Yo, you. I, the first thing yeah, I thought of is, is, like, why didn't you put the pedal in between the sole? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I was, I was, dude, I'm nuts. nasty. You're nasty. <laughs> what? You lock it in, bro. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> no, these look nuts. Um, But I did want to talk about the foam runners for just for a second because the other day mm. I finally got it. I got what the foam runners were really about. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried Crocs on before. I have not, but I was mm-hmm. with a young lady. Uh, we were, had a barbecue at the house, friend of a guest of whatever, mm-hmm. friend of my invite, someone else's invite, came to the house. She was wearing Crocs. I started busting her balls. I was like, the fuck, you a grown-ass woman. Why the fuck are you wearing these Crocs and shit? And she's like, these are the most comfortable things in the world. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, I, I can't wear another shoe now that I've bought in these. Like, I hated them mm-hmm. at first, too, but... Then I put them on. I'm like, oh, these are my shoes now. So <laughs> if he just made a cool, he made Crocs wearable. Yeah. And, sust- and sustainable, biosustainable, because they are I made of algae. Never put, because I've never looked at Crocs as something that was even worth trying on. But after right. talking to her, and then I showed her those, and she was like, oh, shit, I'm definitely copping these. I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. Like, you know, at Sometimes you think you have everything kind of, you understand everything, and then someone points something out so easily. I'm like, dude, I'm so fucking stupid. How did I not realize what he was doing? Yeah, I'm upset. I missed the I missed the first release of the of the foam runners because I I uh, after hearing all of the reviews from a bunch of people, everybody says they're just so comfortable, you know. 
yeah. I was in Flushing one day and I was trying to get bubble tea and some dude had him on behind me online and I, I was talking to him and I was like, yo, what, what are these like? And he was like, bro, there's a reason why I'm out here wearing these right now. These are the most comfortable shoes ever. Yeah. So, I mean, look, uh, if I ever get a chance, I'm not going to go out of my way, but if someone presents me with a pair, even, even if it's like an affordable price of those, I think I might mm-hmm. cop and have some house slippers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like deli run shit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah man. I hear you. I even get those dumb orange pairs. I think the orange pairs are the, the weakest ones that I've seen from the foam runner camp, but I, I might get them just to have them around the house. Oof. What a flex. I guess. Uh, what an at-home flex for just you and your dog. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of, uh, let's let's get off of Kanye. I'm fucking okay. tired of him. All right. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of releases this week, and we got a lot of um, we got a lot of Nike news, obviously, to discuss. Uh, yep. Besides the Kobe Pro shows coming out this week, we do have a heavy lineup of uh, Nikes and. L's for everyone to take. It's going to be more than enough L's for everyone to receive this week. Uh, we we have a sneakers release of the my one of my favorite dunks of the year. Yeah. Uh, the Metacom uh, bare brick uh, yeah. low. They're just to me they are uh, simple, and when you switch those black laces for white laces, I think those are amazing i think they're gonna i'm gonna get those at any means necessary i don't want to obviously i don't want to you know spend too much but i I definitely want that pair i will be getting that uh and hopefully i can hit on sneakers but that's you know it's a long shot i think i think in the first episode that uh we sort of talked about these maybe it was last week i forget but i just like how they look like a regular fucking dunk collab i am so happy that finally someone was like all right we'll focus on material we're not doing anything fucking crazy let's just like do it correctly simply and right i agree well, yeah these it's are a play nice on, it's a play on their uh the air force ones that came out years ago so basically they just they just took the same material basically the same stuff and that was on the original air, the air force one years ago and put it on the dunk yeah keep the story going like don't try to switch I, i'm i'm just happy no one's trying to do chunky dunk fucking uh uh grateful dead shit anymore like that i hope we're done with all that crazy sb shit Oh, bro, oh, we're not done. We're not. We're not done. Listen, the next, the next sneaker we're about to talk about is fucking the the hype train on these are insane. But let's just let me just like I said, the bare bricks. Uh, I'm like I said, they they flew not a little under the radar at first, but I feel like uh, people aren't giving. I think the quality on the shoe is better than the the look. So if these were like create like they're a black sneaker, so people are like, oh, but the quality from what I've heard is amazing uh like i said when you swap the laces i've seen pictures with white laces i think they're dope i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna figure out how to get those um you said that you know you hope that uh, the crazy svs we got a pair of sneakers that people are putting in fucking microwaves because with oh the stimulus, yeah so yeah the, the thermal uh heat map on the sneaker like no like we're not done with nike doing people well, actually, you know what, bro? I'm, I'll even counter you and say that I'm actually not even mad at those because at least the presentation is a black, simple shoe. Like, the crazy shit is something you kind of not have to find, but it's, like, it's it's interactive with the consumer. So, that I, to me, there's, like, a customer story there. But when you buy, like, the Chunky Dunks and you're just wearing cow print and you're looking ridiculous, like, that to me has a disconnect between consumer and uh, interacting with the shoe. Does that make sense? No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> with all right, so not with the all. with the thermal joints, I, okay. I'm just I'm just referencing. I think I said it last week or whenever we first talked about it. Like, we, at least me as a kid, I had that shirt that when you walked outside, it changed colors. Right. Mm-hmm. I had that shit, and I thought it was the flyest shit on the planet. So to me, that shoe hooks into that feeling that I have. Right. Okay. Well, when I was a kid, I was on a farm and I was tipping cows. And that reminds me of the chunky donkeys remind me of that. Uh huh. Uh huh. And Don't then you were, you were at the Grateful Dead concerts too with your dad, right? <laughs> Dude, fuck you. My dad was a Grateful <laughs> Dead fan. You know that. And I don't like him very much. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, I got a snipe from the fucking corner, bro. You see that shit? Corner. I saw. I saw. Ooh, I popped my head out and I was like, well, I'll be fine. <laughs> nope. That's all I'm saying. That's, look, because the presentation of those and the discovery, like, because 
back in the day, maybe not now, because everything's too hype and everyone everything's needed. Like people would have bought that, walked outside them, and been like, "Oh shit!" Or it would have been the selling point for the guy. Go, hey, you seen these? And fucking rub your thumb on it to get some heat, to get some friction, and now it's red. It's like, oh shit. That's, That's what true. I like about this. That's shit. also true. I never, I forgot about that. Like there was a time when if if you had like a heat map shoe like that, you might walk out of the sh- the store for like two weeks until some guy's like, you know, those change colors when you put them under heat or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm going to disagree. I think in the history of SBs, I think a, sh- uh, a dunk like that would fucking move. I think just, and you could put that sneaker in any error. I think. No, no, no. Would, I don't it, think it wouldn't move. I'm thinking. Oh yeah. We're like, not. No, I'm not doubting. I'm the, saying like, like you would, ability like it. you would have to find that out somehow. You know? Um, no, nah, I think, I think that would be the main, that's the main selling point on the sneaker. So I think I think that you know if you no matter when it was I think the main selling point on that sneaker would be the the ability to change based on the heat. So I'm not so I think you know it's not like oh man like you know, look at these whack or these black dunks and then a couple of weeks later everyone's like you know at least nah I think that's that's the selling point on the sneaker because when you when you when you look at it it's just a plain black dunk from the from the from the beginning yep. vantage point but once like you said, like as soon, I mean, dude, that's this is the the corny shit that people are doing with this dunk. It just like you said, like the Ben and Jerry people eating ice cream out of Ben and Jerry's, or like yeah, all that you, shit is gross. I mean, you know, we we've seen it with you know Travis Scott's, like you know, we've seen it with fucking you know with with the Grateful Dead's, like every SB. There's gonna be some cornball doing shit, and I think that's that's to me. The more corny shit you do with the dunk, I think that's that goes to show you how much height there is on the dunk, if that makes sense. Does no, I'm with you. And I'm I'm not even disagreeing. I just like that even though it's crazy and the material choice is wild, like it's a simple presentation that has an interactive story with the consumer. That's what really gets me into it. And like right. even even with these, like the you know, referencing I'm these, I'm talking about the bear bricks even like the story of continuing the concept and it's like a, a remold of the air force one that mm-hmm. that is all cool to me, but shit like, Hey, yo, uh, why don't we come out with some grateful dead SBs, but only three of the five colors and then make them really hard to get for no reason. Right. That's all I'm saying. Well, I think that's, that's what we've, we've seen all year with, with dunks the last like year and a half. We've just seen like, where it just everything is just it's just so hard to get all any any dunk if you get any dunk at retail it's like you know we we just had a we had a uh, a release a couple of days ago with the um, the sambas yeah yeah and like you know it's like these sneakers I mean you know four years ago I mean sambas would have sat you know what I'm saying like it, yep. it, even you know it, it, so I think I think that's where we're uh, we're at and and we we talk about this all the time we just you know it's it's like you said like if you're like i i hear all these people say oh the good old days of sbs but we, let's keep it real sbs have always been for the most part any good sb with a little bit of hype behind it has been not the easiest thing to obtain yeah it's true that's i mean true. you know i can go back i'm going back 15 years and i'm you know i can remember you know this is all obviously pre-social media but let's keep it real like sbs have always had this little thing where it was hard, especially the the quick strikes and the you know the limited ones. I mean, you know, general releases, you know, those were a little different. But fuck, Nike's just like they're just dropping quick strike, quick strike, quick strike, limited edition, special edition SBs, and and you know, and, and you know, it's just it, every sneaker is just. I mean, the fact that the sneakers coming out the gate with four figures, great for I. I'm just shocked, but I mean, it's, I'm not shocked. Yeah, it's it's the grossest understanding thing you could like. You're like, really? You're like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of this idea of like, you get it, but you're also like disgusted by it. Um, did you all guys also get this email from Travis Scott about the Tenet movie? Yeah, correct. All right, so you guys, the the movie's not out. No, and Travis Scott is selling shirts for the movie well not for the movie for the song that's in the movie yeah bro there's travis scott shirts that say the movie logo on him it's for the movie i know no, he got a song it says it says the plan which is featured in the tenant movie bro this shit <laughs> is nasty to me you think that's gross bro, all right so like how many different ways you all right look i guess okay let me try to 
make it understood what my main problem is. There, there's no, I get having an artist do a, a song for a movie. I mean, like you go back to even stuff like Compton where Dr. Dre did that whole soundtrack for that album. Like shit like that makes sense. There's a story, there's a connection and all kind of make, Travis Scott has no business doing anything with this movie. What do you mean he has no business? What are you talking about? What the fuck? Yeah, what do you mean? What, Bro, where is his connection to selling merch on his site for the movie? I'm sure. I'm sure he got paid pretty handsomely to fucking do the song, the uh, whatever, exactly. maybe it's a, the lead single or whatever for for the movie. So I mean, yeah, he's gonna push it. I mean, that's yeah. that's what it is. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, he obviously he's dropping a single to the song. I mean, to the movie. So yeah, I get it. I understand what you're saying. It's like why push a movie that you're not in? But if he on the soundtrack and 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 if he fucking if he's getting paid to do it yeah i get it i understand i understand his it's, it's like all right so we already had i guess i guess part of my problem is also in, in how uh the music is going to be consumed because astral world if you guys remember luke i don't think you were on the podcast yet but we no, had a whole discussion about how that when you bought some shit from the site you got the album download and that was credited to his uh charting numbers Correct. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, and I'm look. I'm not all this like. I don't like being tricked into shit. Like I'm. I wanted the hoodie. I didn't want the album on my phone. All of a sudden, I didn't want this to I, Apple you to me. You know what I mean? Which I oh did like yeah, the, I did like the album. I forgot not, that happened though. I'm not trying to say that like I'm not down with bundles, but at least tell me it's a bundle. I like. I don't trust this. I don't know what he's pulling with this. I don't know what kind of benefit. He's getting from selling the movie. And also, the movie's not even out. There's a bunch of problems I have with this that I, I guess I don't have, like, a good statement to collate with it, but it, it just rubs me the wrong way. It sounds like you're just hating from outside of the club. <laughs> yeah, what little, I mean, like. a little bit. I, I can't see the movie yet, and I want to. <laughs> looks good. It looks like Inception 2, and I'm yes. all over it. Yes, 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 yes. Imagine Inception 2 with a Travis Scott banger in the background. Like, it all sounds fire. Like, I'm not great. We get Taking this space away. from from Leo again. <laughs> yes, uh, for the uh, audio listeners, Luke is doing a great impression of what Louis looks like in the fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that one that one scene that everybody the meme seen? the meme scene the meme scene not the not the one where he's walking down the street meme. No, no, when he's uh, telling the guy that he's in a dream at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys, do, nothing bothers you about this at it, all? It really, it really doesn't, man. Because doesn't, Chris. It's, it's just Travis, like, you're going to put Travis Scott on the song, on the, on the album, on the, um, on the album and on the, on the movie. So obviously, yeah, he's getting some royalties from it. So he's probably wants to bump that up more than anything else. And the easiest way to do that is to tell people, hey, my site's selling merch. Also, it's not, it's all pre-orders, basically. You know how Travis yeah, Scott works. I, I just don't like this bundle shit. I feel like it's it's I not it's authentic. Like it's, it, you know, that's all right. If it's not authentic, fine, I'll give you that. It's not really like uh like you're not authentically getting those sales, right? Is that that's where your argument is? Is that you're not truly get like I didn't go there to buy the album or the single. I'm just buying a t-shirt and then the single is coming for free. But besides that, it's like it, you know, I I think it's just more of a more of the new wave of like how artists are going to be selling their stuff because like look at like if you look at drake right if you look at drake's new like new music like if you look at dark lanes dark lanes is is quite literally a demo tape it's just a bunch of stuff that's been scattered around the internet finally compiled into an album uh it's because like it doesn't really pay to make albums anymore so this is just kind of another i think this is a symptom of that where now you've got this guy promoting a single uh through merch bro it, it's it's just it says the movie on the shirt that's it and it's sold out and it says it's not gonna ship for two to three weeks no 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 Would zoom in know? zoom in enhance that image enhance what does that say underneath tenant well, I, that's you what you're paying read it right now because it's so small it says featuring the plan by travis scott that's what you're paying for also, you, you you jumped out of order, but I mean it's what, what? I was I, I was going to continue to talk about the L's people were going to take uh, this week, but you just you just went oh my bad I just I, I saw a little segue there I, I went for it my fault we can go back I just no no, go no, no 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 terrible listen, transition Chris. I mean listen Chris you listen you you do it's, it's you your want. show right it's you your want, show you, it's our show like, we're the co-hosts we're just backing you up. 
No. You want to you wanna drive the bus how you want to drive the bus. <laughs> I was fucking trying. I had something else to go off of, but listen. No, let's go back. Let's go back. I'm I mean, sorry, you can't go back. You can't go back at this point. I mean, you've already, you, you've tenanted us. <laughs> And that's it. I mean, you know, I, listen, exception I know. to us. Yeah, no, because you want to talk about the biohazards too, right? No, I, I was going to talk. I wasn't going to talk about the biohazards yet. I was going to talk about the unions because oh, the yes. unions were dropping on Saturday. This podcast, like, uh, it was, hey, who am I? Who the fuck am I? Yeah, who are we? Who Just am a couple I? of Chris, guys you, trying to do a podcast, but it clearly Chris, you go out of order all the time, yo. I, funny, <laughs> let me tell you funny story about Chris. All right, let's let's do this. <laughs> fuck this. Now, I, I don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about that anymore. We're going to tell the story. All right, so we do. <laughs> So I love this story because we do we do the CBS thing, right? For uh, we do the and Chris and I we do this, and the producers are like, "Hey, there's gonna be part. There's gonna be two parts. Part one is gonna be the basketball portion of it, right? You ask questions in the basketball portion of it, right? That's it. That's all you do. And then part two, we're gonna talk about his restaurant, right? So this is what so. I'm, oh. I'm navigating. I'm like, all right, cool. Basketball, basketball, uh, this and that. Wait, wait, wait. You no, gotta, no, fuck, no, no, no. No, wait. No, you got to give more context. We're, so we're, we're interviewing Clyde Frazier. Yes, You're we're interviewing, interviewing Clyde Frazier? That, yes. On, you know that? On, on TV. So the, right. like I said, the, the, the TV people, they, they give us an outline. Part one, basketball shit. That's part it. Two, and then part two, restaurant. we talk about <laughs> this, restaurant. This we is actually it. a very funny story. We <laughs> plug his restaurant. Uh-huh. Chris doesn't really he's not he's like i'm trying to just i'm trying to like fucking quarterback this shit so chris that, is I'm, thinking about sonic i'm yeah chris is literally like i'm fucking quarterback in the shit just like <laughs> i'm trying to fucking yeah. you know lean i'm throwing alley oops chris decides he says fuck it i want to talk so he decides to ask clive frazier about his restaurant in part one which we weren't <laughs> supposed to do we were supposed to totally Jesus. do it in part two and then he mentioned a story about how he used to work in the building across the street from where Clyde Frazier's restaurant was, which Clyde Frazier, like, it, 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 Chris, sometimes you just got to fucking just let us fucking, let me navigate the shit, all right? Because I, you oh. we got to the Travis Scott tennis shit, but you just go out of order. Yeah. Don't give My a fuck. Bad. And, and no, you know, because this, you got to just let us just do not just... <laughs> Trust the, trust the process. Thank you. Trust I gotta the trust process. the process. Damn. Thank you. I mean, God damn. Fuck, I blew it. I mean, part <laughs> like again. I said, part one, they specifically <laughs> said basketball, basketball, basketball. We talk about the Knicks, <clears throat> basketball. Chris, like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Let's talk about your restaurant, <laughs> part one, because I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna go on my own order. Stop. Uh. Uh, that Lawrence brings up a very good receipt. <laughs> he brings yes, up a very yes. good receipt. Do yes, 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 yes. <laughs> My you bad, just, L. You gotta just like I said, let us like we talking about L's we was taking this week. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take another L on Saturday, uh, August 29th. Union, they're uh, on their website. They're doing the Union fours. Uh, both colorways uh, are releasing, and then on September 30th, we could take our second official loss. On the, uh, it, they didn't say the sneakers app. They said uh, Jordan.com. Uh, Nike said that on the, in their uh, press release. Um, we're, we, uh, I saw my friend lives in LA. I tried to get him to go out to Union to fill out a raffle because Union did a in store raffle uh, uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. Uh, you had to have an LA County uh, ID. And uh, I heard, you know, pandemic or no pandemic, when motherfuckers see dollar signs when it comes to sneakers, they out there. No. Uh, I see, like I said, we did, we, we, we did an episode a couple weeks ago titled Union 180, where people mm-hmm. shitted on the sneaker. And now as the official image has come out, more people are, celebrities are seated at these sneakers. People are now changing their tune. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this release because I was one of the first people that said I actually enjoy the sneaker. And yep. um, hopefully Union does right and tries to have as much bot protection as possible. But I think uh, – what, what, what are you guys thinking about as, as this week comes forward with the Union? No, we're all catching L's, man. <laughs> catching L's, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of L's going to be taken. Um, you know what's funny, man? Hey, this is another like the Union 180 is really real because other people who are still holding strong about like bro these ain't it are now like you know what I kind of like them like it's the ripple effect has really yeah man really taken effect yes we we see that with so many sneakers we see that with so many sequels or so many collabs where people are like 
Ugh, these are gross. I fucking hate these. Ew, yuck, yuck, yuck. And then as we get official images and as we get celebrities being seated with a sneaker and then we see people and then we see people slowly change or, you know, people start seeing, oh man, I could flip these for such and such. Um, I, you know, and then, you know, obviously I think, I think with this sneaker, obviously we said this before, I think with the Union One being such a, I think a, a universally accepted sneaker, and then we get to this four, which is, you know, it's, it's a little, you know, whether with the tongue or, you know, with the yellow sole, midsole. Um, I, and I think people see dollar signs when they see that a union one right now is going for $2,500. Yeah. They know the formula. It works. Where, where do you guys see these uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of uh, secondary market when they come out? Well, I mean, four figures probably, honestly. Yeah, I mean, they're at the two right now, and I know that's just because there's limited pairs and people with money want them. <clears throat> but I don't see them going down that much. Like they've been at this two thousand mark for however long they've been on the site, so I feel like people are come to expect that that's what they're going to pay if they decide. Yeah, to maybe like eighteen. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe fifteen. Lowest like twelve probably, but I can't see them going down like to three digits. No. Honestly, I'll say this, I, and I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to say this. If, if Union, there's no way Union Force can sustain a $2,000 price, all right? There's no way they can sustain a $1,500 price. I think uh, the Guava Pair, because it is, you know, exclusive to Union and their store, their website, their store, um, I can see those. I, I, I see something similar to like a Travis Scott 6 or like, you know, a, like uh, where I think they are maybe, you know, anywhere from, I'm going to say six to 850 in the beginning, eight, you know, 900. But I, I think obviously as time continues to go on, I think they will get, you know, obviously high. I don't, I can't see them going extremely high when I see other fours, whether it was cause fours or, you know, the black cause four is still, you know, it's like a thousand bucks. And now we're, we're basically, coming up on two years of that, you know, um, Levi's fours, Travis Scott fours, you know, obviously it's a little different, but they're up there. I think it takes, if it starts out at four figures, I just, I, there's no fucking way it does. It's four figures, bro. No way it starts out. It'll get there. Yeah. It's all yeah. these are also just so hard to say too. Like some of these shoes, like where you like, look at the, the price, like you like high to low, like you see what the highest shit is selling for. You're like, how the fuck did this get so yeah. high? And like other times you're like, how did this get so low? So who knows? Really? It's really hard to say. Yeah. I, I just think they'll stay at that four until, until we can actually get outside again. Honestly, I think just because it's a quarantine release, it's going to stay in that four digit range for a little bit longer. I, I, you know, I have a, like I said, I don't know if, if it'll the only reason why I could see it being high is because I think people understand what the Union Ones eventually did. Because when the Union Ones originally uh, released in what November of 2018, um, I remember, I remember them going on the secondary market. I remember the Black Toes were going for around six to seven hundred, five to anywhere from five fifty to seven fifty. I remember they were in that mm -hmm. range, and the Blue Pair because it was the Union exclusive, were going for a little bit more. Um, Obviously, now we look at it, you know, 18 months or, you know, 20 months later, and we're now these are three thousand two twenty five hundred three thousand dollars shoes. Yeah. Um, I think people are going to try to, like, get people to pay that for the four. But I just don't see I don't see it being if, if, if that if if a union force two thousand dollars and fuck the, the ones are going to go to three thousand four thousand. You know, that's fair. That's fair. I also don't know how many pairs they actually made. So depending on what that's how so many. True. Yeah. Like if it. You know what, man? It kind of seems like because they seeded a lot, they get you know they made sure a lot of people had these. They might have a lot to give out. Like maybe some people will catch more W's than we think. Maybe, maybe it'll be us this time, guys. <laughs> I'm, listen, I, I'm hoping, but I, you know, I, I just like I said, it, it just seems so. The way the way the game is now, man. Everyone sees COVID. People seeing dollar signs. Nike is figuring out how to limit all this shit. It just seems like L on top of L on top of L. Yeah. Word. Uh, just a quick thing on as far as releases go, the Yeezy 700 V3 Azerith is coming out this weekend as well. well let's just say what, what the color is. Is it blue? Is it red? <laughs> it's the blue ones. 
Give us like the lens of Instagram that the fil- it looks like. Like what it's filter like, is it? Uh, it's like a little bit of Tokyo mixed with Rio de Janeiro, if that makes any <laughs> sense. No, I don't. No. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but like, no, it's like a, the blue color V3. It'll be like Ooh. what the third V3 we've had since like they first came out. Like at the beginning of the was it beginning of this year? I don't even remember. Bro, I mean. His shit, I can't. I can't even keep up with some of it. Did you see like yeah. the fucking rocket boots that he sampled? He's got rocket boots. No, the shit. It looks like yeah. It looks like you have fucking rockets at the bottom. Of you. They look like snow boots that have rockets and attached to the bottom. They look insane. I can't keep up with the shit he's doing. All these right. weird samples come up out of nowhere. I'm like, ignore the, the samples. This? this one's Ooh. actually coming out this Saturday. It's the the blue V threes. Um, I'm just excited to try to get another pair of V threes for retail. Yeah, you know? and you'll probably get them, buddy. Good for you. I'm already Good saying you me. got them. I'm happy for you. That's my placeholder. I don't think I'm going to win on these, though, because they're v- like the V3s are the only ones that are people. Are those the only ones that move right now? Those are the only ones that move is mm-hmm. the V3s, I think. Everything else is just because it's just 350s for the most part. Hmm. So uh, all you Adidas fans, don't say I didn't do anything for you. And I'm a <laughs> stockholder at Nike, need I remind you. As this for you, this for the fans. Uh, anything else today, guys? I think we I think we wrapped it up. We'll oh, what up? Yeah. Uh, uh, you want to touch these uh, biohacks real quick? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. What What do you guys? All right. They're trash. <laughs> I don't like them. I'm not really all about them. I, I mean, they're kind of cool. They seem like for a younger kid. I mean. Like this headline says here on the Soul Collector article, they are reminiscent of, of the Undefeated Dunks, which I do like. Um, yeah. Undefeated is one of those guys who, like, rarely missed. So, I mean, doing a shoe based off anything Undefeated ever did is kind of a smart move. I'm not going to lie. It comes out September 4th, 170. I mean, definitely a youth shoe. I mean, Luke, I know you just said you're trash, but they're definitely up your alley, if you ask me. Yeah. Whoa, I don't know, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're not, I mean, they, I think they're for everyone because I actually like them. So. <laughs> you actually like them. Well, I don't like them. I just Lawrence, think you have a youthful soul. Yeah, I do. You, do. you I have do. a youthful soul. You decide to grow your hair out in your mid-30s. Like, there's nothing, <laughs> that's, like, that's the most useful shit. <laughs> I mean, yo, the, the entire time I knew Lawrence, I consider him bald. I thought Lawrence was bald up until quarantine. Right? I know and he's got and yo that new accessory you had today to do the uh, the swirls. The shit yeah. was crazy. Yeah, My man coming up <laughs> with the hair. Nah, I, I definitely I like the uh, I like the biohacks. Like you said, the they definitely are reminiscent of the undefeated dunks. Um, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be like I said. It's gonna be another Jordan one that you know that people are gonna take L's on. These are, with the exception of the fat tongue, uh, I, I'm 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 kind of a fan of these. They're different. They're unique. But uh, yeah, let's you know as we get closer, we got another like week and a half, two weeks for these, and hopefully we uh, get a W. You yeah. know what? It definitely has a. Here I'll say this. It definitely has like a '70s, maybe not. 70s but it has like that shag carpeting palette that yeah it kind of reminds me of something uh clyde clyde would wear <laughs> clyde frazier would wear to his restaurant <laughs> and let's just ignore all the basketball stuff because his, his restaurant is in the same building that i used to work in <laughs> oh. 30 20 20 20 Yo, weeks ago it was I across see. the street from the echo office and we would go there a lot we would go play basketball during lunch which is which is a conversation you should have off, off the fucking the, yeah. camera, not on national TV when people are like, "What? What the oh, fuck? What is so the funny. what is the DHL building have to do with any fucking thing?" Yeah. That, um, what is, but hey, the fuck. fucking the segment producers like, I don't know, I don't know. I told them <laughs> one was basketball, two was wrestling. I don't know where this, I don't know where this story come from. <laughs> I wish I remembered the briefing better because Lawrence is right. I definitely did squeeze that in there, but I don't know definitely if they did save it to the yes, two. Yes, they did. They said they said one is 90, 93, 94 Knicks when they went to the finals. And then part two is when you ask the restaurant so he could plug his fucking restaurant. But hey, Chris, you <laughs> you do whatever the fuck you want. You do whatever you want, man. 
Um, which that that we put that on YouTube. That's on there. So if you guys want to watch me and Lawrence, uh, if you want to watch me uh, <laughs> bully the topics out of <laughs> Live Razor, that's on you. I'll put it, the link in the description because I am I, proud of that. I'm I wonder if we just looked at you moment. and kind of went, "What are you talking about, son?" <laughs> it, it definitely was a confused look. I will. <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know what? All right. So just to kind of wrap it, because there was no. No more sneakers news. No more. We got nothing. No else more right news. Now. No, no, not really. No drops. Okay. No, because last week I think I did say that um, I was gonna try to find like a good list, good good mask for you guys. And I'll be honest, like I I, w- I asked a lot of people. I was like, "What's your preference?" So anytime I got a hit on a couple of them, that's when I was like, "Oh, this must be good." Because I mean, for the options that you have now, uh, there's so many to pick from that it was hard for me to like analyze and look through everything. So. Like I said, like anytime I got some hits on a couple of them, I was like, all right, this is good. So, I mean, any Amazon Prime people, these Gildan ones, the same yeah. people that make your shirts, um, they make masks and you can get them bulk for cheap. And they apparently good enough that people were like, yeah, I've bought in a couple of cases. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to run through these kind of quick. This uh, I've, I've never heard of this brand before, but this Tom Bin, I guess, is, is uh, good. It's comfortable. It's reusable cloth. So it's one you keep. That's why in 13 bucks is not bad for some of these masks either. That's not, that's pretty fair for a reusable. Yeah. Um, this guy I've seen a lot. I asked some chick who like lives in the neighborhood. I was like, yo, I've seen you wear that mask. And I've seen some other people. What is it? So she told me it's like this Headley and Bennett mask. It's 22 bucks. Uh, it's, it seemed comfortable on her. It looks nice. It's, uh, yeah, this is just another one that I heard that works good. And then, um, these Uniqlo ones, I heard a lot of good things about. Ooh, Uniqlo. Um, so you can get these, these seem nice. The three packs are 15 bucks. That's kind of all right price. And then the one I was mentioning before was this, I, if they're not out yet, but I've, I've heard a lot of good things from people that I know at Under Armour about this. Mm. Um, okay. so I, yeah, these come out, it's 30 bucks, which is expensive, but I guess it's the only mask you're going to be able to, like, you'll have, it'll be like your mask and, uh, ships nine, four, if you pre-order. So that's my little, uh, tie in there to the mass conversation we had last week there you go okay um and then hypo heat luke you want to start yeah this week i picked the most asian thing i could possibly pick i picked uh the jackie chan leaning uh basketball shoes uh we talked very briefly i think uh last year about jackie chan getting his own leaning shoe um and then these have finally come out and, yo, I got to say, they look like – they just look very clean. They just look like a very clean, comfortable shoe. Um, I trust the I, I trust the Chan man, um, and I, I picked him for my Hypeless Heat this week. The Chan man. The Chan man cometh. Um, okay, I'll go. I'm going to let, let Lawrence tie it off. Uh, I'm sort of picking a not surprise here is uh, this A-Life Everybody High. Um, A Life. So A Life started making their own sneakers again. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not. Um, they have this, and then uh, so the only color change to the options is that black tab there. So mm-hmm. you can see it's obviously reminiscent of a one. I don't know where they uh, necessarily got the silhouette from, but I have a pair of these. Uh, they blessed me with a nice pair, and they're actually really comfortable, man. They hook in with everything, and they're just fucking clean as shit. They're super nice. Um, yeah. I know, you know, I like have that A Life cape everywhere I go, but. I will say this is something that like no this is actually like this is a really nice sneaker that you can wear pretty much with everything. Yeah, they've I've seen these on feet. I've seen them when when we went to go visit uh when we went to go interview Trey. Uh I got to see a pair of these uh, up close too and uh they look great. They're a great shoe as far as like you know, if you if you can't hit on the, all the hype stuff, A life is there. A life got you covered, but buddy. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh I guess on me, it's the Salvatore Ferragamo, the uh, Borg sneaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, these, you like, you do it all in, you go to the club, uh, you can go to the club. Uh, just keep you going, going to another to the club. club. You go to another club. Going to the club. And uh, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, pretty cool. Nice leather, you know, great for going to the club. And, uh, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> So if you pull up to the club, <laughs> bouncer will see you in the sneakers. Like you're supposed to be here, get in the club. Get yeah, in the club. You, you go in the club. So. And then you go, you go to the bartender, and you're like, "Hey, can I get a drink?" 
and then they look at your shoes and they go, this drink's on the house because these are club shoes. That's and correct. And here's your club soda, sir. And there's your club soda for your club shoes. <laughs> Bingo. I guess that wraps it up. Uh, <laughs> that wraps it up. That wraps it up. <laughs> we have to name this based off Clyde Frazier now. I can figure out the name or whatever, but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, this is it, guys. So you know the deal. Follow us on Instagram. Um, at buy the fucking merch, buy bro. Buy the merch. We're all wearing merch right now. Mm-hmm. Where's my logo? There we go. Yeah, so Luke and Lawrence are wearing the uh, Baron Von Fancy uh, collab tee. So he's a good friend of mine. Well, not a good friend. He's a friend of mine. He's a work associate, I'll say. And I've helped him with different projects in the past. And I hit him up one day. I was like, hey, can you do, do your stylings for me in my podcast with my boys? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So he gave it to us. Uh, great guy. Awesome fucking dude for doing that. Mm-hmm. Did not need to, but he did. So that's available along with the logo flip tee and the box logo tee and the Jumpman tee at Remember To Be Happy Studios. Uh, so if you go to Becky's website, um, that's all there. But yeah, follow us on Instagram, buy the merch, join the Discord. Um, at Trevisus, at LZD325, at Not That Cheney, um, at Sub Podcast NYC. And yeah, basically that's it, guys. Discord, the whole thing. I mean, you know. You know the vibes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's it, guys. Thanks again. See you next week. Peace. Peace. Yo, Lawrence, you tore me up, bro. <laughs> you tore We're still me recording, up. stupid. Oh, are we? Oh, shit. I'll edit this. <laughs>